All right, guys, what we're going to talk about this week is species interaction. So what kind of species we find in our ecosystem and how they interact with each other. So the first thing we need to figure out is what a habitat is, and this is where organisms live. This includes the living and non-living parts of the environment, so it's part of their ecosystem. Um, you could think of like a hamster's habitat, like when you buy a little hamster cage and they have you buy like their habitat. Same kind of deal. Next, we'll talk about the parts of a habitat. So you can break your habitat into specific parts. You have your biotic factors. And when you see the word biotic, I want you to think of a living like biology. Right? These are the living parts of the environment. It's going to be plants and animals. So if we look in that picture over on to the side, we have um, fungus, we have plants, we have the animals that are around. Those are all the biotic factors in the habitat. Then you have the abiotic factors. That's the non-living part. It's a little bit harder to think of this, but this is going to be like the temperature. This is going to be the humidity, the soil makeup, like so what chemicals are in the soil and how nutrient the soil is and all that kind of stuff, which also affects like what can grow there. All right, so now we're going to talk about the niche. A niche is more specific than a habitat. A niche is going to be um, like exactly where one little organism lives. Okay, so it's going to include their place in the food web, it's going to include the range of temperatures they need to survive, the type of food it's going to eat, how it gets its food, other species that eat its food, so like who it competes with, um, and the physical conditions necessary for survival. So this is going to be everything you can think of about that little animal. And what I always tell kids is, you know how when you go to the pet store, they have those like racks of books, it's kind of like a circle spinny thing and it has like all about hamsters, all about lizards, all about, um, I don't know, boxers, all about Dalmatians, and you can like take a book and when you're a little like when you got your first pet you kind of got one of those and read about it that was the animal's niche all right and the thing about a niche is that two species can't share the same niche because they're going to compete with each other all right you have to have different niches in the same habitat all right if they are have the same niche in the same habitat they're going to compete until one of them actually excludes the other one after niche, we have environmental relationships. So these are going to be um, first broken into our abiotic and biotic factors. So we just talked about the abiotic, and now we're talking about the biotic. All right, remember that biotic factors are living things. So the biotic factors, the relationships can either have um, symbiotic relationships, competition, so competitive relationships, or predator-prey relationships. And then your symbiotic relationships can be broken down into parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. So first, our relationships for competition. This is when two or more organisms need the same ecological resources, so the same food, the same houses, the same mates, something like that, and it leads to fighting because there's just not an unlimited supply of resources. And then the next one is predation. We should know what this is. This is when one organism, the predator, captures and eats the prey. For it to be predation, you can't just kill one. You have to actually eat it. Does that make sense to everybody? So it's like if you got um, killed by a stampede, right? If the deer didn't eat you, it wasn't predation. And then lastly, we have symbiosis. Symbiosis is when two species live in close um, association with one another, right? And they somehow affect each other because they live so closely. So the types of symbiosis you can find are parasitism. That's this right here. That is when one benefits at the expense of the other and one is harmed. All right, so this is a tomato hornworm. These little guys are um, hornet's eggs, and the hornet lays its eggs on the tomato hornworm, and then the larvae eat it from the inside out, right, and they live on it. Um, another type of parasite that you guys know is like a tick, right? It goes on a deer or a person, sucks its blood, lives there for a little bit, most of the time, parasites don't kill their um, host. They just harm them. Our second type is mutualism. This is when both benefit, and it's up here with this crocodile and this bird, right? So the bird, he's cleaning the crocodile's teeth. That's how the crocodile benefits. But in the same time, the bird is actually getting lunch. So he's eating, getting food, the crocodile's getting clean teeth. Both are benefiting from the relationship. And then the last one is commensalism. This is when one benefits, and one doesn't have any kind of um, effect, right? So that's this down here. We have a bird in the cactus. The bird is getting a place to have his nest and have his home. The cactus isn't getting harmed, but he's not getting helped either. He just gets nothing, all right? So those are our three types of symbiotic relationships.